Uh, I learned about self-help graphics uh, through an invitation from this uh, people in, in a group that I had, which was um, a group called OSCO, which in Spanish means nausea. It's uh, three other people and myself uh, at the time. And it was Harry Gamboa Jr., Patsy Valdez, and Willie Heron. And they said they were going to a meeting that uh, self-help was uh, having. And I believe it was not at the present location, it was pre the location that they have now. So it was a prior location. Uh, I believe it might have been on Brooklyn, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I went to the meeting and what it was was a Day of the Dead meeting. And uh, they were organizing an activity that was going to be taking place uh, on Evergreen Cemetery, uh, sort of just a, a procession or a walk through Evergreen Cemetery. And at the time, um, you know, if people would have asked me, what do you think of the Day of the Dead? I probably would have said candy. Um, I think for some people, they have, uh, it meant other things, um, and uh, cultural references, uh, also different, maybe religious kind of connotations as well. Uh, in my art making, and in what I wanted to do, it was very foreign in many ways. I didn't want to use uh, icons that were, everybody was already familiar with. I didn't want to use imagery that uh, was being repeated that I would see in the murals of East LA. Uh, different types of imagery was perhaps slanted in a different direction than I wanted to go into. And I always thought if there was one voice to a community, it was kind of like Stalinism. Stalinism is when you only have one voice, one opinion of something. And so for me, if somebody would say, would you like to participate in a Day of the Dead? Well, I would not go for the traditional type of uh, Day of the Dead. I would want to create my own Day of the Dead using my own imagery, using sensibilities that were contemporary for its time, or still for today. So I went to the meeting and after talked to the Oscar group, and we, I guess at the time, were a little bit more progressive in our concepts of who we were. We were very urban, young people. We were probably uh, late teens. and. We didn't think of ourselves as wanting to go back in time to recreate certain things. Our time was now. This is what we ha have to capture. This is being honest about who we are at this particular moment in time. Uh, and we were never going to ask for permission to do anything that we did. So we would go into the streets and do things. This seemed uh, a little too formal. And you have the Leo Limones, you had the other artists that were present there at that same meeting. And I believe they were all kind of in agreement that you know they were talking about the historical things of the uh, Day of the Dead. And, and when we came away from that meeting, we said, we can't go along with this. We have to create our own. Uh, it has to be uniquely East LA. It has to be uniquely us for who we are at this present time. We can't just grab something and impose something on top of it. Let's create our own, whatever that may be. In that, we can discover something more about our culture, about ourselves. And there are no limitations as to what we want to do with our art or our art making. And hopefully, in, the, you know, in time, people can look back and say, these people were forging their own uh, direction. So, uh, for our first Day of the Dead, uh, I f believe... Uh, we kind of disrupted the whole uh, procession type activity. Uh, we were looked on, I believe, by fellow artists as uh, maybe punks. Um, uh, all kinds of names were tossed in our direction as to what they thought of us at the time. So 
we were not um, necessarily idea role models at the time. We just did not want to be that either. We thought of ourselves as artists. And as an artist, you forge your direction as to what you want to do. And you don't have people saying, well, you should do this or your artwork should look like that. Um, that to me, again, like I say, that's Stalinism. That's not something I want to participate in. So with self-help, um, I think we, we did a piece where Willie came as a triplane, uh, Harry came as a, a bolt of lightning, uh, Patsy came as the universe, I came on a truck in an envelope, an oversized envelope, and it was a letter to the dead. And so that was kind of something we thought, we're going to take it uh, just differently, whereas the others felt they had to do the altars. Ours was, we alter the whole situation. We take over the street. This is our streets. This is uh, where we live, and uh, nobody's going to say what we should be able to do in those uh, areas of where we grew up. And you have to also consider the time. This is like the early 70s. So you've had like the Chicano moratorium taking place. Uh, and a radicalization of young people, you know, being brought up during a time of unrest, uh, also civil rights, uh, also a war that we were all opposed in many ways. Uh, friends that we knew since we were teenagers uh, were coming back in body bags. So we had a very nauseating feeling about the times, in a way, that's hence the word hostile as our group. So uh, we were the, you know, perhaps the nihilist of the time, or you know, the people that questioned so many different things on many different levels, uh, identity, everything. So uh, with that first statement that you know, we're not gonna stick to those confines uh, of a set way of doing something in a traditional kind of way, that uh, artists for liberation, artists for opening up and not confine them. So, uh, self-help kept on inviting us um, to do things. By the mid-70s, I think we just said, time's up for us, just are not interested in this anymore. And then we saw that there were more artists continually doing these altar pieces and having the same kind of work. Uh, so our participation was kind of weaning, in a way, from that institution. 